Okay, third time happen. One, two, three, action. Okay, what is up guys? Fahan here with Za once again. And today we have Jared. How are you, Jared? Thank you so much for, me. for yeah. coming down and you know reviewing your bike with us, the Honda CBR uh, 954 RR. So I read somewhere, this is one of the rarest bikes one of the rarest CBRs ever and it's a unique bike mm. the name itself is a unique bike you know? Mm. you know if I were to say that I ride a 954 what is the first brand of bike that comes into your mind? I don't know what uh, does 999 or 969 Ducati ah? Uh, you know because if I say I ride a 954 you know I would think uh, Ducati you know but then it, because it's a very very seldom you hear a Japanese bike using a funny funny number. You, usually they will like round off to the nearest 10 or the nearest 100. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because uh, back in the days, uh, uh, Honda, yeah, the top of the line bike is the 750, 750cc. Mm -hmm. Japanese engineer, uh, Narababa, mm -hmm. he wanted to create something, uh, the, the CBR line. Mm -hmm. So he actually take the base, the foundation of the 750, so he upgraded increase the horsepower and everything, increase the capacity to 900. So that's where the first uh, fire blade came about, which is the CBR 900 uh, mm. and followed by the 919, 929, and followed by the 794. Based on my understanding, this is his uh, last uh, creation. Before he retired, and Honda moves on to release the 1000 CBR 1000 uh, series. Uh, I think up till now, he's still riding this bike. He still own, own this bike and he's still riding it. Yeah, because to him, it's his uh, favorite like, because he wanted to create an easy to ride, mm -hmm. a lightweight sports bike. This is the lightest CBR fire blade in the market uh, among the whole series. Yeah, so, before Jared tells us a story about his CBR 954 RR, I'm going to give a bit of background about it. Considered the sixth generation of the CBR 900 fire blade series of sports bike, the Honda CBR 954 RR had a limited production run from 2002 till 2003. Weighing at 168 kg, it is one of the lightest sports bikes for its time. Engine is a 954cc liquid cool inline 4 cylinder 4 stroke DOHC with program fuel injection and a 6 speed constant mesh sequential manual. Given the short production run and the rare nature of the CBR 954RR, it is an extremely rare sight in Singapore. So, Jared, I read somewhere in Singapore, this is one of the rare bikes because Honda only produced it for two years. Yes. And for yourself, how do you manage to get your hands on it? I actually got it last year. Mm. Uh, so, I rode it about maybe seven to eight months mm. now because this is my first class two bike. Initially, I didn't want to ride a sports bike. I'm a touring adventure bike kind of person. Ah, okay. So, I was actually influenced by a friend. He's very into sports bike. Ah. So, he actually influenced me you know, to watch MotoGP, that kind of stuff. Actually, me and my friend, we are both uh, Honda fans. La. We like Honda bikes. Mm -hmm. Me too, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <Our> yes. <laughs> Before I actually pass my class two, I have a look around uh, Carousel <laughs> and other platforms to see what are the available bikes that I can buy after I get my class two. So I chance upon, like, Honda's is quite general, mm. either the CBR 600 mm. or the CBR 1000 RR. So it's, these are the two common ones that mm. you can find. Mm -mm. But because I see on the market, the, the price is quite steep, given that the COE is like less than five years, you're paying like uh, maybe more than 15,000 uh -huh. for a CBR 1000. Uh -huh, yeah. I so I scroll through and I happen to chance upon this bike mm. on uh, Carousel. So from far, it, it's, the post stated there is 954. Then I look at the picture, uh, because it's not the original fairing, uh, you see. Uh -huh. So from far, I look at it, it looks very modern because mm. of the black color paint. It has all the sharp edges. La. So it actually caught my attention. Then I, I went to uh, do some research. Then I actually kind of like this bike because even though it's not a thousand, by yeah. number, it's not a thousand, but it performs like a 1000cc uh -huh. because it has the weight of a 600 but it has a power of a thousand. So it's really, really very fun to ride. Ah, so okay. I went to down to view and I kind of fall in love with it. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> love at first sight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's very special uh, compared to the, the usual ones that you see on the road. Ah. Uh, you don't really chance upon this. How much How much do you buy? I bought this at 7.5. 7,500. 7,500? With how many years? Uh, two and a half years, mm -hmm. yeah, including the NEA rebate. When the time comes, are you going to go for the NEA rebate or are you going to extend it again or are you what are you going to uh, export it or what? As of now, <laughs> as of now, um, I do not have much plans of what I want to do with it. The, the initial plan was after I get my class, so at least I can cross borders la, ah. with the bike to, to explore further places with mm -hmm, the class mm -hmm. two bike uh, and maybe even go to track with it. 
mm -hmm. oh, just to try. Wow. Yeah, because haven't had a chance to la, try any track. So I thought, okay, since I own a sports bike, I can maybe try, you know, maybe maybe it's something that I would like. As of now, because of COVID, mm. I can't track with it, I can't tow with it. Uh, we don't know when the border's gonna open. So I still unsure what I'm gonna do with it after the COE ends. I might renew uh, and keep it for track use. Like maybe I uh, extend it until mm -hmm. 20 so I can bring it overseas. Or I might just re-register re and just get the NEA rebate. No. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm still in the midst of uh, considering. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah. Because my concern mm -hmm. is this mm -hmm. bike is so old, it's less than 20 years. Slightly uh, less. Yeah. Because it's registered in 2003. Given the age, right, the engine, because it has been overhauled before mm -hmm. by uh, the previous, previous owner. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure of the condition, how the engine is going to last over the next few years. Okay. So that might be a risk la, for me if I were to renew. Well, I would suggest to export it la, because I read somewhere in, I think, the Europe or States. La. This is very sought after. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a collector's item. <laughs> yes, it's a, in the States, yes. La. Because you see, if you see on YouTube, if you type uh, CBR954RR, right, all the videos that comes out is from the States, the Western countries. Mm. Uh, not so much of the Japanese and Asia countries. Yeah. So perhaps maybe you can just put it on eBay, you know, <laughs> get it auction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it's kind of sad la, if I were to let it go. Because, yeah, la, sayang, huh? yeah. It's a, it's a really nice bike, la, I would say. It's a fun bike for you? Yeah, it's very, very fun. Every time I ride, hop on the bike, I enjoy it la, every moment. Uh, compared to the other bikes that you have ridden so far, mm. how you operate the handling and the uh, maneuverability, you know? Okay, because this is my first sports first. bike that I mm -hmm. own. I never ride a sports bike before, other mm -hmm. than trying my friend's one. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the first impression that the bike gave me right, is Wow, it's quite low <laughs> because it's an aggressive posture. Mm -hmm. And also, it's a, my first class too. The power is quite... Tremendous. Eh? Yeah, quite drastic <laughs> la, for me compared to my old bikes. So what, yeah. what, were, what were you riding before this? Uh, before I owned this, I have an ADB 150. Uh, I own Super 4. Mm -hmm. And before the Super 4, I own a WR125X. It's a motor. Yeah, so because all these are quite upright posture, ah, then when I hop onto this, it's very different. It's also light, right? I wouldn't say it's light for the first time lah, because first time uh, riding a class two on the road. Posture and given the power it has, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's quite intimidating uh, at first. Now, let, let's talk about the mechanical issues. How is your maintenance schedule like? Mm. How much do you usually spend for each maintenance? Because I don't ride this bike very often. I have mm. uh, This is my joyride, my weekend bike. So far, up to date, I only did servicing once. Mm -hmm. So I changed the engine oil, four bottles, the standard one. Uh, for spark plug, oil filter, then the uh, air filter, the, the usual servicing like brake pads mm -hmm. and stuff. That cost me about uh, 200 plus mm -hmm. because back then uh, my bike broke down, the starter motor couldn't start. So I did change the starter motor together mm -hmm. with the servicing. Mm -hmm. So total up is about, uh, I can't remember the exact number but it's about 400 plus. 400 plus. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, given that I rode a Super 4 before, uh, I think this is about the same uh, maintenance la, the, mm. the, the price in terms mm. of price yeah, because Super 4 is also using four bottles la. do you know of any inherent mechanical issues with the bike or not uh, are you in any uh, 954RR group uh, on Facebook or in somewhere in Singapore do they share sad, any information sadly no uh, I'm not in any like uh, CBR group or anything. Uh -huh. la. I'm not sure of if there's any common issues with this bike. Mm -hmm. mm. But so far from day one up to now, I would say this bike is almost perfect. La. Other than the starter motor, which is a common wear and tear. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, it's perfect. It hasn't given me any issues at all. And really, I that's, that's the reason why I love it so much because I, I was quite taken aback la, because last time I rode a Super 4 and you know Super 4 it has a lot of wear and tear issues. Mm, correct. Then I spent quite a bomb on the bike uh, trying to maintain it la, and mm -hmm. repairs and stuff. So once I hop onto this, it changed my perspective of class 2 bikes. Once I own this, up, up to now, there's no problems at all mm -hmm. as compared to my previous uh, Super, Super 4. Ah, yeah. okay. I would thought that riding a class 2 is going to be high maintenance, I'm going to spend a lot of money. but. This actually changed my perspective. La. But mm. probably also because the previous owner take good care of it or mm. he did something to it. What is the mileage like so far? I mean, considering it's already a 20 year, okay. almost 20 years old bike. Okay, um, because this um, technology is very old. Uh -uh. So right now, if you see on the meter, right, 
it doesn't have Analog. exact mileage. I see. <laughs> it, it's it's stayed as nine 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 nine. Oh, yeah. It flip around. It won't reset. Oh my god. Yeah. So it's it's always nine 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 nine. Yeah. yeah. So there's no way I can track mm. the mileage. I mean, considering you already nine 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 nine, so far. yeah. <laughs> it's beyond that already. It's, it's, it's way beyond that already. Road. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned uh, just now the previous owner, right? Hmm. Uh, it's not the original cover set, is it? I don't think this is the original cover uh. set. This, I think, uh, resprayed before. Oh, mm-hmm. Because the original one looks very yeah, yeah. vintage, it's very old design, school. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. And we have to talk about the design. Uh. It's really somewhat in the old school and modern combination combined. Mm. Yeah. It has the curves that I like. <laughs> <laughs> and it has somewhat has modern cues also, especially mm-hmm. with the angular parts such as the tank and the front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can really see it's going to a through a transition of the design stage. La. Yeah. Mm. I mean it's it's uh, a design that actually caught my attention la, because we all like modern looking sports bike. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it looks very very nice. Yes, but at the same time for me myself I also like old uh, vintage sports bike. Like the the mini the Hondas one, big mm-hmm. like RVF, VFR four hundred, NSR, the PGM four, uh, uh, that, that that series lah, you know those so those. I really love those uh, old uh, bikes that Honda produce So la. this yeah. is just nice lah. Nice, uh, it's, it's somewhere in between. Modern, yeah. and somewhat old school also. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, you have to talk about technology on this bike. I mm. think there's none. <laughs> there's no electronics at all. No ABS. No ABS. No modes. Yeah. No. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> but I would say. Given that it's a 2002 to 2003 mm-hmm. bike, right? It has a PGM FI, the fuel inject. Mm. Uh, fuel injection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is mm. quite rare, la, Given that it's so old, right? Mm. It still has uh, the PGM FI. Some technology. bikes at like the time were still using carburetor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. even uh, Super Four, the mm. Spec One to Spec Three, is yeah. still using uh, carburetor. carburetor. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They're just about to release uh, the fuel injection, injection one for yeah, for the rest of the line. Mm. How big is the fuel tank, and how far can you actually uh, ride on a full? T- the fuel tank is 18 liters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Usually, because there's no fuel gauge. See this? Uh? Yeah, because it's a sports oh, but bike. This a oh, that's not the fuel gauge, that's the te- uh, temperature gauge. Oh. Uh, so there's no fuel gauge also. But there's a picture of a gas tank there. Uh, yeah, that one is for the one that temperature. Uh, yeah, that one is the low fuel light. Uh. Oh, low fuel light only. Uh, uh. So okay. usually, I for all my bikes, like, uh. I will not reach uh, to the point where the fuel light turns on uh-uh. when I, I, I go for pump. La. Mm-hmm. I usually pump earlier. Because to me, it makes no difference like if I pump earlier or later. Mm. <laughs> so for this bike, usually I'll pump at about uh, 200, mm-hmm. sometimes earlier. Yeah, so, so what's yeah, the if I say like? 1 liter, I can go at least 15, uh. 15 to 16, around mm. there. Yeah. Okay, so it's quite okay for a sports bike, I, I say. Let's talk about the modifications, mods, mm. customization. What? Under yeah. your care, mm. what, have you, what have you done so far? Actually, I didn't do much. Even the cord lock is your. Even the cord lock. Yeah, the cord lock is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I didn't do much to the bike because it's such an old bike. Uh. To find, to even find modification, to even find accessories for this bike mm-hmm. is it's very, very difficult. Oh my mm. gosh. Yeah. yeah. No, even on top of. I want to ask about that. Uh, yeah, it's very difficult. Even I would like to find like uh, um, like you know some accessories are uh, like you have to go to eBay. Ebay, eh? yeah, what the yeah, yeah, the ship from the states, from oh the western God. countries. Oh, yeah, you don't find some parts in Japan is almost quite difficult, lah. Yeah, mm. but so far under my care, uh, I, I've changed the windshield. windshield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the previous one is clear and it's more flat. I like something more the curve, the curve, yeah. so it looks more aggressive, lah. Like more for track use. Yeah, and apart from that, I there's nothing but I change. Uh, I only installed the quick shif- quick shifter. Shifter. Mm-hmm. I see. Mm. So that's pretty much about it. La. And mm. also the mirrors, because the stock mirrors broke. Someone knocked my bike la, and uh, <laughs> the mirrors broke. La. So I changed to this uh, mirrors, which is not the stock one. The stock one is actually more round. So which workshop do you usually send for... <coughs> for what? I mean... Servicing or... Servicing or... Okay, or uh, did the, the previous owner tell you, okay, you go to this shop, uh, they have been servicing my bike for all this while? Uh, uh, not really. Okay, for me, most of my bikes, all my bikes, la, I mm. will only go to Bike Works, uh, Abeng. La. I will I'll always go to him because he's the go-to guy. La. Yeah. So I, I actually trust him with all my bikes. La, and uh, uh, mm. he knows what to do with it la, if there's any issues. Do you get a lot of looks with this bike? You know, when you're riding around, mm, people ask you. I don't... People didn't really come to me and ask me uh, what was this bike, you know. But if I were to park it somewhere at a workshop or something, people will 
they will take a look lah. They will People just who know who know about this bike then they will yeah, yeah. But yeah. Generally, I see I see this bike at one glance it blends the traffic. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah, doesn't yeah, stand yeah. out. It doesn't stand out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which is quite okay lah. I wouldn't want something so. Uh, so you know, loud. Attention seeking. Yeah, attention seeking. <laughs> yeah. And it's not it's not very loud also. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's actually quite okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also stock. Eh? Yeah, this is oh, a stock oh, one. Oh, oh, <laughs> stock. Eh? Yeah, a stock I, one. I so, thought the Yoshi Mahal one. Oh no. Oh, stock. <laughs> uh, also shop. No, usually, uh, sport bike uh, people will change the exhaust. Yeah, yeah that's the right. first thing the the guy will change. No? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind it's quite kind of hard to find a legal exhaust uh, on, mm. on this bike. Yeah, because it's so old. Really. And mm. also a rare bike. Uh, two years they produce this. I cannot believe it. No? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's it? What's your height? I'm about one seven nine one eight zero. Do you tip? Yeah. Do you have to tip toe on uh, this one? Not really. Not really. Uh, just slightly, but most of the time, no. Nah. Just like you mentioned, okay. uh, the posture quite aggressive. Uh. Yeah. Is, so is it is it comfortable for the daily for the use. daily use? It's actually this bike can be a daily bike. Mm -hmm. It can be uh, because it's not very hot. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, oh yeah, not it's hot. not very hot. I was very surprised when I rode this bike. It was most of the time Singapore weather very hot then usually yeah. I would like to wear berms lah. Mm. So uh, most of the time I wear berms and ride uh, with this but it's, it's not hot at all. Ah. I don't feel like it's very very hot. Yeah, uh, it's super, quite bearable. But Super 4 is very hot right? Yeah, yeah Super 4 is hot. Yeah, I think because <laughs> Super 4, um, the configuration of the bike is the engine, the carburetor is directly under the tank. Ah. So, and the tank is metal right? So all the heat comes up and the tank is very, very hot. <laughs> yeah, but for this part, I think the engine is slightly pushed forward, mm. slightly in front of the tank. So it's, there's not much heat lah. I would say it's yeah. not very hot. It's very bearable. So, so okay. for daily ride, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's just that if I were to ride longer distance, mm -hmm. far, I will feel uh, the tired, tired. Like, ah. uh, like in my arms, in my back. Yeah, so it's normal lah. For for, for pillion wise, pillion wise, is it comfortable in terms of the? Okay, okay of course lah. I mean, the seat is white, it's big, and so. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, I, for this one is considered quite big, you big, know, yeah. for a pillion seat because uh, most, you know, of other, most of the other most of the other sports bike that we reviewed uh, the, the pillion seat is very small you know even share with the rider <laughs> <laughs> uh, for pillion wise it's definitely not comfortable mm -hmm. because you see, you see the, the height difference uh, for uh, the pillion uh, seat and the rider seat is a lot higher so if it, since it's a lot higher the pillion have to lean a lot more mm. forward yeah, they have to grip onto the tank <laughs> and stuff uh. so <laughs> even for me myself with a pillion behind it's not comfortable for me also. Mm. Yeah. Because all the weight will come to me. Lah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember, you know, when I was a young boy, uh, I pillied my uncle. He was riding a sports bike. I can't remember what, what was the bike. Uh. But I was like, <laughs> I'm like so uncomfortable, you know. Yeah. And then yeah. you know lah, like, as a kid, right? Uh. I not I was not even a teenager yet, you know. Uh. Yeah, I have to like stretch out oh too far. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think in general, most sports bike is it wouldn't be comfortable lah, to ride pillion. Mm. Yeah. Because of the posture. It's always very comfortable to ride uh, alone. alone. It's, mm. it's very fun. You will love every moment of it. But with a pillion, you have to be more careful mm. yeah, because of the posture. So let's talk about this power. Mm. I think given that it's a sports bike, you know when I rode the Z1000, the Kawasaki Z1000, so I have trouble taming, taming the power. Yeah. It's damn powerful. Mm. Okay, you A bit only, it really goes. You know? yeah. uh, for, but how about this bike? The, for the first time I rode this bike out when I bought it, like, uh. it's quite intimidating because <laughs> I'm not used to it, like, the, not the power. But I would say as of now, I think it's quite okay. It's not like you said the Z1000, it's not like the Z1000 that kind of uh, yeah. search. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I, I rode the Z1000 before too. Oh my god, they uh, are crazy bikes. Yeah. Right? So it's very very talky. The ah, low end yes. is very talky. Mm. But for this, uh, the, there's low end power also. Mm. But it's not as sensitive as the Z1000. Like you don't, it's not like you just throttle and the bike will just rocket. Mm. You know? This this bike is quite okay. But it has the in, more than enough power. La. Ultimately it's a sports bike also. Mm. Hopefully yeah. the borders open, you get to try out this bike on the track uh, yeah. thing, uh. but given the age right because it has also been overhauled uh -huh. before uh, definitely there's some loss of power also. Mm, yeah, yeah, I, I can feel it like. considering that would you really want to go to track on a 20 year old bike uh, on a 20 year old bike <laughs> and then really really test out its uh, its <laughs> capability you keep it under, under 6000 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. I, okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind trying la, you know I've, of course I will start slow la. then once I get more confident and I'm sure that the bike can mm. go then I will pull it 
uh, even higher lah. Go, mm. go even faster. But the previous owner, uh, he's also a track guy lah. He actually bought this bike for track. But Did he go to track? Yeah. Did he share oh, with okay. you his experience? Uh, he didn't ride this bike to track because of COVID lah. So ah. he actually bought this to build up for track, but. He didn't have a chance to, chance so he decided to sell it lah. Then I bought it over. Ah, I see, then I see. he told me if I ever want to track with this bike, I can. It's yeah. just that if something goes wrong, I have to stand by another engine or something lah, or mm. more spare parts. I think lah. you should just take it slow lah on yeah, the track. Correct, lah. correct. Uh. <laughs> you be like 100, 120. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I think the, the this bike can go lah. I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> quite sure lah. La. I can, can I, I'm quite sure lah. La. Yeah. But you can't compare this with a modern sports bike lah. I mean yeah. because of the technology, <laughs> the age. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely different. The power is definitely way lesser than modern sports bike. Yeah. Yeah, they're not taking into account the the, the the age of the bike also. I think where and tear issues. Mm, yes. Uh, so Considering that, yeah. yeah. I mean, important is if whether whether you want to bring it, uh, it is going to track or not, ah. Uh, yeah. Does the spare part is it easily available? You yes. know, yes. Ah, yes. you know, you don't want to have a, a blown uh, gasket or blown yeah. engine. You know, correct. Uh, correct. And then you don't have a spare part. Yeah. Alama, yeah. that one is very sad, sir. Yeah. <laughs> the because you see the the side walls of the tire, right? there's yeah. a lot of the rubbers. Coming. Yeah. It's this uh, tire is also from the previous owner lah. He ah. he actually tracked with another bike. Oh. So he actually put their tires on this. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. So I did ask him, uh, did you track this bike? He said no, but there's also the tires mark. But he said on this, he brought over from the other bikes. Oh, ah, oh okay, see, okay, yeah. okay. He really <laughs> sell you like want to review off at like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he's a he's a very he's a genuine owner lah. Like um, very nice guy. Mm. Now, now we sort of become friends lah. Ah, okay. Yeah, he shared a lot of cool, things man. with me. Uh, a lot of things about sports bike in general. Ah. Mm. What's, what bike is he riding? Right now, um, I, can't, I can't remember if he sold it already. He's riding a VTR 1000. Mm, okay. Oh, that one another legendary bike. Left to have on the show. Mm. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is a good platform, you know. Our, the, the best thing about our videos is that we have a chance to see these rare bikes, you know, yeah. mm. these uncommon bikes before it is go gone. gone. Yeah, you might not see it in, on the roads, lah, uh, yeah. maybe in a few years down the road. In fact, you know, we really wanted to review all the two-stroke bikes, you know, like the KR, 125Z, RXZ, you know, before these bikes are gone, come, 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 come everybody, come. <laughs> come. We're glad we invite you. Yeah. I think okay, you can, if, if it's possible, if there's someone who likes to let you review their bikes, uh, I think hmm. there's a same gen uh, Yamaha R1. Hmm. It also looks quite similar lah, with the gigantic exhaust. If someone who likes to review that model, probably. Actually, we review the R1 really. Okay, but no problem. It's the, the newer, modern, modern, modern one. one, one, one yeah. 2015. Yeah. So, in your eight months of ownership, what's the best memory so far that you had? The best memory, actually, to me. Every, Every time I, I wrote this bike out, <laughs> it's a uh, best memory to me because I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But if you want to pick out a uh, very significant uh, memory I had, right, it's when the bike broke down on me. <laughs> I was just at the petrol kiosk, uh -huh. wanting to fill up and go for a ride. Then after filling up, the bike couldn't start. So I tried to rectify it like, at the petrol kiosk, then it still couldn't start. So no choice, I have to push the bike home. <laughs> I think the bike, you say, hey, I don't want this. This brain lah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want V power. <laughs> I was actually giving it V power so. Oh, uh, ah. but, it, but it just doesn't want to start. So yeah. that's where the Satomoto problem came about. Ah. Yeah, but it is it's quite memorable in the sense that I have to push it home from the petrol kiosk. It's, it's very, very tiring. I ever did something crazy like that, you know? Really? I pushed my bike from Gambas Avenue all the way to B, you know. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> serious, serious. Last time when I was riding my Vespa, my Vespa broke down and I was so really frustrated. You know, it just like, I suddenly thought, you know. I was Push like, la. fuck it lah. You I told me this story before. Uh, and then my friend, hey, why you never call To? <laughs> never came into my yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah. One thing to add on is uh, the, about the pushing of the bikes, right? Uh. I think, thankfully lah, you know, when we take class two in the school, they actually ask us to uh, yeah, do yeah. The, the pushing of the bike. Correct. I think that's very important lah, when it comes to a situation <laughs> like that. Somehow, right, the, this bike has an aesthetic appeal to me, you know. Mm. It has the curves that I like, it's mm. very simple, and yet aggressive looks mm. makes me like, yeah, I want to keep this as a collection lah. Yeah, it has modern cues <laughs> lah. Okay, once again, Jared, thank you so much okay. for coming out. Yeah, thank you. Man, thank you. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not shocked uh, guys, because I'm standing here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, Jared, thank you once again for coming out. Okay, you know, no sharing problem. this bike with us. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, like I said, it's nice to have old bikes on the show, you know.
know. Mm. Uh, at least we preserve some memory of it. Before yeah, it's gone. Yeah, I mean, mm. if owners out there, if you have an a uh, rare or vintage bike in your ownership, you know, come join us in our videos. We would like to preserve that piece of memory with your beloved bike so that you can show on to your you know children grandchildren later on <laughs> yeah. hey daddy last grand grandpa last time uh, oh right cbr bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no need that lah any riders want to review any bike with us do get in touch with us on our social media pages below if you like uh, this video like and share with your riding kakis and don't forget to subscribe and uh, yeah that's it for the vlog and we will see you in the next one